Hey, baby Blossoms and Titans. What's going on? It's me, Basori, here with a video for you about letting shit go. Letting shit go. Letting shit go. Story time. Story time. I'm not even going to do a real, like, you know, uh, go to my site. I'm not even going to do that. We're going to talk. Let me turn my light on. I tell you, it's raining like hell outside, y'all. Like the Dickens, but it's okay. Let me turn this light down too, because it's too bright. So, let's talk about letting shit go, hun. I am in my spirit room. It's raining. I'm trying to get my husband came in here and vacuum. I love it. Um, I went to the store. And picked up a little, um, some more apothecary jars. So I'm gonna be unwrapping these as I talk, working and talking, honey. That's what we're gonna do today. Let me change this. So let's talk about letting shit go. One of the jars I got. Letting shit go. This all stemmed from a uh, situation that happened this morning. And that is why I'm doing this particular video about letting shit go. So, earlier today, I went on a little uh, rendezvous with myself and I seen someone, an uh, ex-co-worker that I used to work with, that I used to work with about three years ago, three, listen, about three years ago. Three years, y'all. Three. Three. Uno, dos, tres. Okay? Hold on to that three years. Y'all like this one? Look at that. Ooh. That's going to be a nice potion bottle here. I am so in the jar, honey. So, let's start off from the beginning so I can, you know, so you can understand what I'm talking about. So, it's a, a guy. He's, um homosexual nothing wrong with that my son is too there's nothing wrong with that hell okay um we work at the same job me and him and another girl was very tight-knit we would go to lunch together we would vibe together we would be texting each other doing work out of all three i'm the oldest but I was the more, I would say the more mature because I'm in my 40s. They were a little younger, but still vibe with them, you know. I always gave them, you know, good, positive thoughts and all of that. So one day, he was telling me about his, now this, about his best friend. Look at this jar, y'all. Let me use this. In my store, in my herbal apothecary, but he was telling me about one of his best friends, right? Was messing with a guy, and um, when he said the guy's name, I was like, "Who is the guy that he go that he is messing with? Who your best friend is messing with?" And when he told me, it kind of rang a bell because that's the guy that my son in the relationship with. Y'all picking up? So, he never said don't say anything, even though if he would have. I'm talking about my son, not about you. My son and your best friend is sleeping with or um, talking to my son's current boyfriend, which is not anymore. But that's the gist of the story. So, me as a parent first... I'm going to go to my son and let him know. I did tell my son, I did tell my son, after I told him the info, my son, I told him, I said, don't say anything because I got the information from someone else. My son, being young, dumb, and full of cum, could not hold it, and I did it. He couldn't hold it because his boyfriend is cheating on him with my friend's best friend okay 
So, once my son said something to said guy, guy went and said something to my son's boyfriend, okay? Then he turned around, the, the, the best friend turned around and called his best friend, who is my friend, and tried to go off on him about telling his business, right? So he came to me the next day, not nasty or nothing. He was like, what happened? Cause he was looking at me stupid. I said, what you mean? He was like, what did you say? I said, I told my son that your best friend, I didn't give him a name cause I don't know your best friend's name, but I was telling him that he better watch his boyfriend because he's supposedly talking to your friend. I didn't see anything wrong with that because it had nothing to do with you. But I get that that's your best friend, but it is what it is. Y'all hear that? Thunder, lightning, love it. So I am a storm witch, huh? So he stopped really talking to me, which it kind of hurt my feelings a little bit because I'm a Libra, y'all. I don't do thing, anything maliciously to anybody. But he didn't understand, I guess because he didn't have children, that that's my son. And we're talking about AIDS is prevalent out there. And if you're going to be cheating and my son not know that you are, have another person in the background, what type of mom would I be to hold that information from my son? No, sir. So I had to speak on it. If it was something small and petty, I would have never said nothing. But we're talking about some real life shit. And I got to turn my fan on back. So he didn't speak to me for a couple of days, which, okay. <laughs> okay. So finally, the girl that, that used to go to lunch with us, she noticed this. And she was like, what's going on with you and, um, and old guy? And I was like, girl, talk to him. Talk to him. Because I ain't got no issue. He the one got the issue. And it it all depends on how you come to me. If he would have came to me mad nasty, he would have really had a motherfucking issue. But he just stopped talking to me. Cool. I'm not going to beg, plead, ponder about none of that. All in all, it had nothing to do with you, but I guess your friend rimmed you, but you, I don't know how, I don't know, but that's my son. I'm supposed to tell him that, okay? So, y'all, the front, the girl pulled me and him together one day, and we had a conversation with him. He stated to me, he felt like I betrayed him, and I'm looking at him like, Oh my God, betrayal. You want me to not tell my son that I birthed into this world for two days in labor that his boyfriend is cheating on him with your friend and you telling me I betrayed you? What type of shit is that? I'm looking at him like, well, I let him speak. And then I came to him with the same thing I'm telling you guys. That's my son. He needed to know this. I never told him a name. I guess his boyfriend knew the name. Because if he wasn't doing it, how did they know it was your best friend? Right? So they knew who it was. Okay. So my son... Cause I was kind of mad at my son because I told him not to say nothing. But then again, I thought about it. Um, pressure reacts. Pressure reacts. I done been there, done that. I done been cheated on. So me telling him not to say nothing, I, I should have known that that wasn't gonna be true, but I could cannot go back and change the way I said it. I just said it like it was. I kept it real. Boy, you need to look at your boyfriend, yada, yada. This is the information I got. I don't know what you want to do with it. Please don't say nothing. But, you know, I can't be mad at my son for speaking his truth about somebody that's cheating on him. 
because I done had it done to me. So I then told him, I said, you know what? If you feel that way, you're going to just have to feel that way. You're just going to have to feel that way. I told him I apologize. I apologized in that moment that it happened that way, but I don't apologize for speaking and telling my son what was going on. I'm not, never going to apologize for that. I apologize for the way it happened, yes, but I'm never going to apologize for no bullshit like that. That's just not what I'm going to do. Okay? But I stood in it. I apologized, and we let it go. Later on, three years ago, three years ago, three years ago, he still never talked to me again. Like, he, he would wave, and we sat next to each other, but he stopped speaking to me. And we kind of like, you know, it didn't matter to me because I'm not attached to the hip with nothing, with nothing but money, my husband, my immediate, my clients, and my home. Okay? So if you chose not to speak to me anymore due to that, and I already apologized and we're trying to move on, and you choose to not speak to me again, have it. Bye and be motherfucking blessed. That's how I feel. So, oh, y'all got a lot of jaws, honey. So I picked up a lot of these big ones. I need to move them out of the way. So, um, so he, again, he stopped talking to me. Cool, whatever. It is what it is, honey. I ain't gonna beg a plea. I just told you. And I moved on. He moved on with life. I moved on with life. Okay. Because I don't give a fuck. Today, y'all, three years from today, I, I guess, three years. We, we talking about three years. I seen him this morning. Said, guy, where um, the place that I needed to go. And when I seen him, he obviously parked beside me because I had to park. I was already in the building. And my car has a specific tag on it. A specific tag and it says for sore, you know it's my car. And I was in the building and he could have parked anywhere, but he parked beside me. And I'm sure he seen my car when he got out of the car. So I'm in the building and he is walking past me and I'm excited to see him because I didn't even think about the shit. I was just thinking about the good shit we used to talk about. I said, um, hey, his name, real lively like. He was like, hey, how you doing? Real low vibrational like. But I pick up on energy a lot. So it was a lot of people in there. So I decided, I said, well, maybe he didn't mean it like that. Maybe because it was a lot of people in here that his energy was off. So I'm going to try this again. I was actually walking out behind him and um, he was already at the car and I was making it to the car and I realized he had parked beside me. So at this point, because we're parked side by side, we could have had a conversation of any kind. How you doing? How has life been? Where do you work now? It's been three years, that type of conversation because we're side by side. So I then says, I'm walking up on him because remember he was going in front of me. And I said, oh, you parked beside me. He said, um, I said, wow. He was like, yeah, but his, I read, let me tell y'all something about me. This witch right here. I'm a good reader of energy. I don't even need no motherfucking tarot cards. Okay. I read energy very well. That is one of my power power uh flows that is one of my power flows i read people's energy very well very well i can read you from your how you talk how you vibe i can read it so when he said that i kind of pulled back because he was like his his tone was very low vib vibrational it was very monotone it was very not happy to see you like oh, okay so I then continue, I realized that's what it was. And I'm like, you know what? I'm still the same way I was three years ago. Bitch, I ain't gonna beg and plead for you to motherfucking talk to me. You still holding on to bullshit? Looking like a leather seal in the face. That's why you look older than me. Way older. 
because you still hold on to motherfucking increpid ass shit that you need to let go. What? So, once that happened, I realized I stood back and I politely um, finished what I was doing. Didn't even say bye. Got in my motherfucking nice ass motherfucking car and drove the fuck off. Because I'm not in the business of begging no motherfucking body to talk to me. What? Baby. So. Got some more spare jars, y'all. So. This is for y'all, too. And I had. This story just was like looming, looming. How. I was going to not do the, do the um, do a video on this. But I'm like. Let's talk about letting shit go. Why do we, do you, or I don't hold on to shit. Why do you all hold on to shit? And I'm talking to the ones that do this. So don't come in my comment box talking about, talking about nothing. I'm talking to you. You, the ones who hold on to shit and don't let it go. Do you really think somebody sitting around three years holding on to fucking baggage? Do you really think? Do you really? Baggage stinks. Holding on to negative energy stinks. It, it just, it doesn't make sense. Growth is a motherfucking beautiful thing. Growth is a beautiful thing. And I'm not holding on to no negative shit three years later and you still harping or thinking about something that happened three years ago three years ago three I, I just can't believe it three years ago and when i know what i know and he know he know i work he know i i i, I would do work he know i know a lot of stuff about him that i can air his ass out if i really wanted to I'm not that type of person because I keep secrets. I still know stuff to this day. But what you're not going to do is make me feel like, uh, like I'm begging you to talk to me. That's what you're not going to do. Bitch, you still holding on to that. And I hope they watch my videos. I don't give a fat fuck. Because the, the energy off of that is, nigga, let it go. Let it go. It's nothing that serious in my life. I never looked through a rearview mirror, especially, and especially if I never had any intimate anything with you. We were just cool, and we was. I thought we was more than that, but for me to you taking, you think you're gonna take precedence over my son? You got another motherfucking fucking thing coming, bro. You got another thing coming. And then it was a, something like very, very important. Like that's nothing small not to tell your child. I don't understand how he felt like I was going to hold it. But he didn't know. Let's just be honest though. He didn't know that my son was talking to the guy that his friend was talking to. But that's the thing. If you didn't know, you didn't know. I knew though because I asked him about the when he said the name. I was like, what? I said he work at where he the guy work at and I'm not putting names out there. I hope y'all following along because it's certain people in here that I don't want to mention their name. But the gist of the story is letting shit go. You holding on to shit for three years. Three years. Can you imagine the built up, pinned up shit that you go through? You holding on to negative ass shit. Can you imagine the possibilities of you not remembering the good times that we had compared to that one fucked up incident and it was fucked up but it had to be done and you sitting like three years later i'm pretty sure you're probably not even talking to none of them people anymore just like my son he's not even with old dude anymore you still holding on to that bitch let shit go speak it, it's nothing wrong with hey how you doing what you doing now? It's nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm not saying be fake and phony, but the situation does not cause for all of that animosity. 
It won't about you. Growth is a beautiful motherfucking thing, y'all. Growth is a beautiful thing, honey. <laughs> Growth is a beautiful thing. I'm not finna sit up there and play semantics with nobody. Y'all, this some good petition paper that they wrap your stuff in, ain't it? I know. But I'm not finna play semantics and games with no motherfucking body. And I grow and I let shit go. I do not hold on to bullshit. And that's just it. That's just it. That's all. Y'all stop fucking holding on to shit because it make you older. It make you look older. It, it, it his, like I said, his seal leather looking face. Bitch, you look like your face made a leather shoe. Because you holding on to fucking package and baggage ass shit. Let that shit ride and move on with your life and go be great. Now, how you doing? Let it go, y'all. It ain't worth your shell being built up with all that heaviness and that grief. It's not worth your mind being tangled and in weed with all of that negative ass shit going on. Release that shit. Be great. Because me, if it was the other way around and I seen you three years later, baby, I'm going to be pulled up like I was this morning and I'm going to keep it real gully. Hey, how you doing? I'm going to make it seem like, baby, I'm the most, you know, I done grew so much. You still stuck, baby. Don't be stuck in the vortex. Don't be stuck in the matrix. Let that shit go. It is purging time. Stop playing. And that is my story. Let it go. Let it go. Move on. Have a great life. Characterize yourself. Vibe high. All high frequencies. High vibrations. Goddess and God walking. Just do it. And stop holding on to baggage. Years later. Work through it. And go on. Okay, and if somebody in your motherfucking space and they acting all like they ain't got nothing to say, I tell you what, you better put on your crown and walk the fuck off and say and look at that motherfucker like you the queen and he the peasant. You better do that. A petty peasant, that's what he is. He don't know that he bowed down to me today. He's so shook sure in that negative shit. That he bowed down to me today. Because when a queen speak, another king or queen, if you in, and you got your crown on and you set all in royalty, you would have spoke back. You would have said, hey, how you doing? You would have pulled up on them. You heard me. Don't let no motherfucking body make you feel different. Don't let no motherfucking body turn your energy. Or you control your own energy. And even though the shit happened, he stopped talking to me. I'm still treating you the same. You still holding on to that shit, bitch. Okay. So, guys. Please like, subscribe, and support my channel. And every time I say that, when y'all see me close my eyes, I'm putting it to the universe. I'm going to have a million subscribers. I will and I shall. If you want anything spiritual and you need anything to help you in your walk, um, go to my website, visionsbibasori.com. I do do work. I do healing work. I do love work. I do self-love work. I do court case work. I do all kind of workings. If you want to book with me, send me an email, visionsbibasori at gmail.com. And let's talk. Let's vibe. I'll tell you and talk to you. Um, and then we'll set up a love, con uh, not just a love consultation, a consultation. Um, and I need to add it to my books on my site. That's what I'm working on today. And guys, be blessed. Don't let nobody else steer your energy. How just I'm so pulled up. I steer people energy, uh, good and bad. I got it like that though. But if you are in your inside of yourself and you walking as a queen, a goddess, a god. 
There is nobody that can move your energy but you. You heard me. You heard me. All right, guys. Thumbs up. Many blessings. I love y'all. Bye.